Steve. 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 Hello, internet fans. It's your old pal Rotten Roger DeMarco here from 3bproductionco.com. And this week, we're going to be talking about William Sachs' 1977 film, The Incredible Melting Man. Okay, so here is your plot synopsis. Steve, the astronaut, goes into space. And then when him and his astronaut crew are exposed to the radiation from the rings of Saturn, all of them die except for Steve. Steve is exposed to the radiation and starts melting. He comes back to Earth and he becomes the incredible melting man. Super logical 1977 filmmaking. It's completely rational that he would come back to Earth be melting and turn into a crazy man. But before we get into my overall thoughts of the film, first, let's take a look at Ryan Rogers Splatter Facts. We have 12 dead bodies. We have two titties. We have slow motion running. We have melty POV. We have one severed head floating downstream. We have kids scaring. We have one rapey photographer. We have dramatic knitting and my personal favorite we have gratuitous steve ing the methods of death include but are not limited to off-screen radiation fucking off-screen decapitation eaten chewed on electrocution and gunshot always got to keep it simple always got to have a gunshot in there all this grandiose stuff why not just have a little pop Game over, son. Now, on to my overall thoughts of this film. First and foremost, cannot talk about this movie without talking about the jelly factor. This movie is the definition of a jelly factor film. Everything is dripping and slimy and oozy and disgusting. And I love it. Here we go. So Steve comes back to Earth and starts melting. He goes mad because he's melting. So he escapes and goes on a melty rampage. The scientists and doctors figure out that to slow his melting process, he needs DNA and skin and blood from other people. If he ingests it, he slows down his own melting process. Seems also, very 1977 sciency. This movie is a total throwback to the 1950s and 1960s radiation films. Instead of it being a giant monster, we are given a new creature in the form of Steve the Incredible Melting Man, which the title alone sounds fantastic. It sounds like a 1950s or a 1960s film. This movie captures all of the charm of those 50s and 60s schlock films, but this film comes complete with all of the gratuitous things of the 70s. This is a drive-in staple film where you have not a crazy amount of nudity, but the nudity we get is uh, there for no reason. Therefore, it is gratuitous nudity. The gore effects are surprisingly well done. This is just one of those really fun late night films that I feel needed to be seen on a big screen at a drive-in with a girl next to you. This has that total atmosphere. You can't talk about this movie without talking about the look of The Incredible Melting Man, the effects in general. And I can say that even though some of the effects artists weren't overly happy with the work in this film, I absolutely love it. I think that it's just on the right side of scary. It's just hokey enough to entertain you for an hour and a half and you can just suspend all belief in the real world and just totally go along for the ride that this dude is melting. Even though it doesn't really look like he's melting, it just looks like he's progressively gooey, like Jason in Jason Takes Manhattan, just progressively drippings with goo. I also like the fact that since he was exposed to radiation, he is melting at a rapid rate, but at the same time, getting stronger. 
How? How's that possible? He would be incredibly frail. He'd be the incredibly frail melting man. Step on a twig and he'd be down for six hours. But again, you suspend all belief, you have a good time. With this, having that vibe of those 50s and 60s films, a lot of the kills are actually off screen. Some of the violence is left to our imagination, but the violence that we do see is outstanding, including a very good severed head floating downstream, falling on some rocks and cracking open. There's some really gross stuff in this movie. One of the things that you have to laugh at when you watch this movie is the amount of times that the lead character's name is said. They say Steve so many times in this movie that it should become a drinking game. If it were a drinking game, everyone would be dead. So don't do that because I said to, because you will all die. And drink water, stay hydrated, don't melt. I understand why they do it, because they want to humanize him and they want you to feel something for him. Although, you don't get a lot of him before the melting. You get maybe a minute at best so it's tough to make you sympathize with the monster this is a far cry from frankenstein folks bad in the most fun way possible steve don't do it steve steve listen steve we can get through this steve i really like the military presence in this movie and i think that that's another thing that lends to how funny this movie is. There is some very dry comedy in this script. I think if you're not in the right mood, you're not going to catch. But I like the character of General Perry, and I like how absolutely useless he is. This guy does nothing to solve the problem or, you know, come up with any solutions. He just kind of he wants to come over to Ted's house and have dinner and have a couple of drinks. And every time you see this guy, he's just very lackadaisical. Just, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna find that old boy. And when we do, gonna be hell to pay. That's just how you do a military voice. I just put it on there like that, and then it go. He don't really talk like that. Yeah, another thing that I noticed in my most recent viewing of this film is during the finale, the final showdown, there's a ridiculous amount of stair climbing. Wherever they are, this power plant, whatever this fucking place is, doesn't make any sense. Looks like the boiler room in fucking Freddy's Revenge. I feel so bad for the actors, cause let's say you shoot one of those scenes and you just run up 95 stairs and then the director's like, that shit was out of focus. I didn't really like the way you turned that corner there, Bill. Could you imagine spending 12 hours like running up and down those steps? Man, you better get that shit in one take. And there were a lot of hands in the cookie jar when it came to this film and it getting made and it getting distribution and all of that stuff because it was originally titled The Ghoul from Outer Space, and William Sachs totally had a sense of humor, and he was really trying to play up the comedic elements in the script, but so many people kept telling him, no, it's not a comedy, it's a straight-up horror film, and the editing process got in the way, and all of these different people had different visions for the version of the film that they wanted to see. And so what we get is this mishmash of dark comedy with some very artistic camera shots and some very strange editing choices to make this more of a straightforward horror film. But if you sit back and watch it like you would watch Return of the Living Dead, you really pick up on all of the comedy because it was completely intended to be like a vault of horror, like a Tales from the Crypt. Those old EC comics that have this element of revenge, but are also very tongue in cheek. It was completely intended to be Creepshow before Creepshow. I wanna see that version of this movie. There are so many effects artists that got their start on this film. It all did little tiny things in the creation of this film. Whether it be the hand prosthetics, the face prosthetic, the severed ears, the severed head, so many people worked together that went on to do incredible things. No pun intended, because it's the incredible melting man. And they come up with something like this. And I love this movie so much for 
all of the ridiculous entertainment that it gives me and I can't recommend it enough. I hope that you guys take my recommendation and check this movie out because in my personal opinion, this movie is 100% popcorn as fuck. I mean, the title alone says it. If the title, The Incredible Melting Man, doesn't entice you, take a look at that creature design. And if that doesn't entice you, take a look at the names who worked in the effects field, namely Rick Baker. And if that doesn't entice you, I don't know what else I can do, but I love this movie. If you haven't seen it and you feel like you need to see it, click the link in the description and get a copy of The Incredible Melting Man for you today. But uh, I suppose I should probably get going because uh, after all, it's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch them. So why not me, right? Steve! And if you're still here, click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads because we do four uploads a week for you guys. We want to introduce you to movies that you might not know about. So if you're having a good time, stick around with us because we're here all week, folks.